about our moving papers sometime Thursday night between Thursday and Friday. If you went home to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, Karen did. We love that woman, don't we? Amen. We love her. And we love her mother. So let's pray for Barbara today and continue on. There's no, uh, uh, nothing, but yeah, no arrangements to be announced as yet. But let's be in prayer. For, I know you have, those of you that know about it have been. So let's, let's hold up our blessed sister Barbara. Don't we love her? We love her. Amen. I'm sure there's many prayer needs today. If you have a need, would you just raise your hand? Praise God. Amen. Just look over at somebody, got their hand raised, and say, I agree with you. Amen. Matthew 18, 19. The two of you will disagree. Amen. Whatever they ask will be given to them from me. Jesus said, from my Father who is in heaven. Praise God. Let's pray, would you? Father, we love you today, God. God, today, Lord, we need that communion in the Holy Ghost. We need that strong spiritual service. God, to wrap your arms around us today. God, in this world, Jesus, you said in this world we will have troubles. God, you said, be of good cheer. You've overcome the world. Amen. And this world's not our home. We're just passing through. Thank God. Father, oh, there'll be a homecoming one of these days. A homecoming in heaven. Amen. And if you've made preparations to be there, amen, you've got something to shout about. And if you haven't made preparations, you're in a good place to to make them before this service is ended today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God. We have uh, Brother Parks with us today. He's a minister. He uh, has written uh, all kinds of tracks, and he's presented our church with a whole big train full of them. There's no charge whatsoever. These are the tracks. I've been seeing them around different places, those yellow high yellow uh, get your attention tracks and uh, he just seems like to be a blessed man I appreciate talking to him appreciate what he's doing amen I know God is going to bless him he already has but you know that's what God does God, God blesses and then you are blessed amen it works that way praise God Good to have Steve with us today for the first time. We appreciate him being with us. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, good prayer for Liz back there. Let me remind you of it. We try to make enough copies for people to take home with them that would, that would pray. And uh, every name on there is somebody. Somebody we love. Somebody that needs prayer. Amen. Let's worship God. Let's have that strong spiritual experience today, okay? It's yours, it's mine, it's yours and it's mine. Praise God. Worship God.
any can make this the chorus song. And everybody sing. Man, sing my song. important to you 
that everything on this earth put together. Because it says, what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? But I'd like to give my testimony now. I was born in Elk Creek, Virginia. And two doctors gave me up. I had bronchial pneumonia. And they told my parents, they said, this child is going to die. There's nothing more we can do for him. Take him home and try to make him as comfort as you can and uh, keep him as well as you can until he dies. And my grandmother, she was one of the most uh, religious, fine ladies that I have ever met in my life. She was just... Uh, just absolutely sold on God and sold on Jesus and sold on salvation. She came over to our house and she brought camphor and alcohol. Now camphor is in the Bible as a medical thing. So she started washing me with camphor and alcohol and uh, my uh, condition stabilized. And she says, this child is not going to die. He's going to be a preacher. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's all I've ever wanted to be. <laughs> and God has been so good to me. And it's so nice to be at this church today. And everybody has been so kind and so gracious. And the pastors and the preachers here are fantastic. And I'm going to be here till they throw me out. <laughs> Thank you for what you've done. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Look at that. Praise God. Hallelujah. 80 years young. He's not 80 years old. He's 80 years young. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Got one more song, and Jason's coming in to minister to us today. We love you guys. Praise God. We we uh, been having a we try to have communion the first part of the month. This is the first Sunday, but we're going to change that. We're going to have it the first Sunday that I'm preaching. I won't give Jason more time than I need. Amen. But uh, we'll have communion next Sunday. Okay. And uh, we love you. Appreciate you. Worship God, man. Jason's going to minister to us today.
I mean, it's not blowing in here. It's not only blowing in here. And then when you walk out of those doors, you take the wind with you. Pray yeah. God, when you go to a restaurant today or when you go, understand that there's a dove. The Bible says Jesus, when he was baptized and he come out of the water, the Holy Spirit, like as a dove, landed on him and remained on him. Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, Bill Johnson, he says this, live your life like you want the dove to remain on your shoulder. Amen. Talk to other people like you want the dove to remain on your shoulder. Amen. So that means you can't act out when you get out of church and somebody cuts you off. You can't uh, raise your finger and tell them how old you are or how old you think they are and cuss them out and have a, a bump, bumper sticker that says honk if you love Jesus. And on your car right now. Or you say, got your Tri Cities Church of God tag on your car. If you've got that tag on your car, don't be, don't be telling people how old they are. <laughs> Amen. Going down the road. Amen. That's never a good thing. Live our lives like we want the Holy Spirit does to remain on our shoulders. We want to keep your name at all costs. We need Him. We need the Spirit of God in our lives. Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Out of the New King James Version this morning, I'll be reading. It says, I thank God. Paul talking to his spiritual son, Timothy. He said, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience. As my forefathers did. As without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see you. Being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you. And you got something in you. Touch your shoulder, touch your neighbor's shoulder, and say, You got something in you. You got something in you. Was twelve first and your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice? And I am persuaded it, I am persuaded it is in you also. Therefore I remind you, listen to this, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you to the laying on of our hands. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Praise God. And that word that God has not given us a spirit of fear, that word translates timidity, being timid. For too long, I believe the church has been timid. And by the word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's instructing us. He doesn't want you to be timid. He wants you to stand up in this day. Everybody else, nobody else is timid. Everybody else is speaking out. Everybody else is speaking up. It's time for the people of God to speak up with a heart of love. I'm not talking about being mean. I'm talking about with a heart of love, sharing the love of God. But don't be afraid. God has not given you a timid spirit. He's given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Praise God. I want to focus in today on that word. Stir up. Fan in the flame. You ever had a fire that's kind of dwindled down and thought how neat it was, you can just go up to it and blow on it just a little bit. If you've got some fuel around it, which would be wood or, or hay or something, again, you start doing that and all of a sudden it goes, the fire gets going again. Sometimes our fire dwindles down just a little bit. And I'm praying that the Spirit of God, will, that wind that I dreamed about last night's going to blow in your heart, in your life, like a mighty rushing wind. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, they were in one mind and one core. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like a mighty rushing wind. Lord, let that wind blow in here today. Let it blow in here today. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Lord, let the wind blow in me. Oh, let the wind blow in me today. Praise God. Stretch your hand and pray for me. I'll pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak through me today. 
God, I need your touch. I need your strength. I need your help today. So, Lord, we pray. We ask you. We know the word's going to go forth and it will accomplish that with it, which it's sent to accomplish. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Stir up the gift of God. Stir it up. And I thought about how I believe today that the that the Holy Spirit has become in the church today. You know, when I grew up, we we called we called him the Holy Ghost. I thought the Holy Ghost. It, does it offend you if I call him the Holy Ghost? But the Holy Ghost is, is not an option that you can choose just like you when you go to uh, your restaurant today and you go, you know, I want the steak, but I like to have it medium well and a baked potato and instead of salad, I like to have some broccoli. You know, we come to church and we just Okay, I know if I have Jesus, I'm going to heaven. I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. And I, that, that Holy Ghost stuff, that speaking in tongues stuff, that, uh, that you know, sometimes it just, I don't know about all of that. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I think I might just leave that option off. But I'm telling you, we've come to a place in our lives, and we've come to our place in the world we're living in today, to where our little church experience, our little showing up on Sunday morning for about an hour and an hour and a half, amen, depending on who's preaching, see, amen. When you get here and when you're in that, in that situation, you'll find out that that's not going to be enough to get you through. I mean, it's not going to be enough, amen, to cause all that we're seeing in the world today. The darkness that we're seeing, we're seeing the dark things coming like we never dreamed we would live in a time that we're living in and we need and I believe the Holy Spirit saying to the church today and then he wants his church back and then he's tired of being put back in a corner somewhere being hit off to the side somewhere he wants us to know that we can't do church without him we can't have church without the Holy Ghost we've got to have the Holy Spirit moving and in our church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And today I want to say these points today. First of all, he's inviting us. So he's inviting me. Amen. How many likes to be invited? Amen. We all like to be invited, right? Yeah. He's inviting us. Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, Come to the waters. And if you have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy? I mean, is that not a picture of the world today? There's not a shortage of money. Man, if you look out in this world today, the world has plenty of money. But they're not satisfied. They're not satisfied. He does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me. And eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. He's inviting us. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Weigh down with fear and worry about your past, your present, or what's next. You ever wonder if you ever begin to think that way? I know I do. I get way ahead of myself sometimes because I always look and think, of, well, what's going to happen tomorrow? And the tomorrow's not even here yet. I don't even know if I'll be in tomorrow. But I'm worried. Be worried about tomorrow. Worried about the things. Listen to me this morning. God is already there. 
He's already in tomorrow. He sees an end from the beginning. He's inviting us to a place of faith, trust, a place like a writer of Hebrews, a place of looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Whosoever will, he said, let it them come. He's inviting us. The Holy Spirit today is inviting to you. You say, not me. You're not talking about me, preacher. Take your, take your finger there, everybody, and check your pulse. My heart's beating good right now.
It's alive and active in you. Praise God. Say it's in me. Oh, it's in you. The Spirit of God, the power of God is within you. Let the wind of God begin to blow on our hearts and reactivate that fire in our lives. A fire of revival. Praise God. Hallelujah. I remember being a, being a boy. I long, and I don't. I, I know that what's coming, I believe the glory. Now, when I say this, by looking back, I'm not saying I want to go back, but I'm just telling you, the church begins, the needs to begin to pray for the Spirit of God to begin to move in people's hearts and lives. Because we think we can do it with, with lights and smoke and music and sound. We think we can do it. And then with great displays of uh, uh, buildings and all the things that, that we thank God for. But I'm telling you, when I was raised up, Terry, we had none of that stuff. We barely were just getting started in children's church. That was just a new thing. Most of the time, the kids just sit out in big church. They didn't go back to the Bible. And then I remember being 10, 9, 10, 11 years old, be sitting there in church. And then Sister Goldie, she'd stand up, she'd scream, a blood curling scream. And she'd begin to shake her head and shake her hair. Bobby Pins would begin to fly everywhere. Oh, how many cold chills would run up the back of my head. And then my ears would fall and fill up with water. And I'd be thinking, what in the world is going on? What do I feel right now? Right there, goodness gracious. 
Amen. We joined hands again, began to walk out to something I noticed, Dad, is when we got out there deep, all the work, all my work was over. All of a sudden, something just began to go, just lifted me. I think I don't even have to swim. Water just picking me up, letting me down. You just had to just move your arms just a little bit. And that's what God's wanting to do with this church. We try to work. We're working so hard. We're just staying in and ankle deep, knee deep. Want to stay in control. And God's saying, hey, you can't do it. Get it out of your head. You're not going to make it happen. It's not a man-made deal. Come on out into this deep water. Let the Spirit of God begin to rise and pick you up. Something. 
such as one's life or word as a vacuum to cause or aim, to expose to, risk for the attainment or support of some, engage in all of the king's cause. Another word is to attract and hold by influence or power, to interlock with. He's engaging us. He's interlocking with you. He's saying the Holy Spirit is not a doer. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is a helper. Hallelujah. He's a comforter. And then he's not going to do it for us, but he will help us if we'll start working. And he's engaging us and he's saying, listen, I've given you everything you need. I've given you everything. I went to the cross. I paid the price. I came out of the empty tomb. I said it is finished. The work is done. It is completed. All power is given unto me. Praise God. And now I give it unto you. Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel. Praise God. Tell everybody you see about me. Tell the world about me. Tell them about Jesus. Hallelujah. And when you begin to work for him, he'll wake you up and help you. He's engaging us. He's helping us. Ephesians 3 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. Stand with me. He's inviting us. He's engaging us. The last three points, this is why I said two quarters, because some, some of y'all will pass out. I kept on. He, he, he's empowering us. He's equipped us. And he's encouraging us. By his mighty hand. First Peter 5, 6. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Listen to this. Resist him. Look at your name. Resist him. Let me tell you something about the enemy. Leave with this today. Yes, he's powerful. And he goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's always looking for an opportunity to take you out. He's always looking for a way, amen, to stick to steal, kill, and destroy from you. But I want to tell you something. He can't do anything he wants to do. He's not all powerful. God is all powerful. God is all mystic. God is all man. God is the one. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's given you authority. Amen. Whenever the enemy's coming against you, the Spirit of God, the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up the standard against him. You stand up and you resist him. You resist him. Praise God. Happy with everything that is within you, you resist the enemy. The Bible says that he will flee from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You don't ever get through, but you just got to quit. You just have to quit. But we'll take this up next time I'm up here, okay? We'll finish this. If you're here today and you're discouraged and you're needing that Family, you need that, that fire. Maybe your fire is dwindled down and you need the Spirit of God to begin to blow into your heart, yeah. blow into your life. And then I, I'm telling you, it's not hard. It's not difficult. It's not something you have to beg for. The Bible says it's a gift sent from heaven. Man, when you have a gift, all you've got to do is receive it. Oh, you just got to take it. He's already got your name on it. 
It's just already addressed to you. All you got to do is take a hold of it and say, Woo, look what I've got. Hallelujah, it's for me. It's for me, and I receive it. Oh, by faith I receive it. Glory to God, and allow God to touch you today. Praise God. Praise God. They sing, sing for me. Go ahead. Now, these altars are open. You'll come and pray. And you come. Oh, thank you. Let the hope from heaven. Oh. 